Hey, big bro, how many times have you played princess in this car? Out of the blue, my five-year-old niece, Tiana, asked this question. Huh? While driving, my husband, Corey, responded with a surprised look. What do you mean? I I'm playing princess. Well, have you had a lot of princesses in the car? I'm Annie, a 25-year-old office worker. I've recently tied the knot. My husband, Corey, a co-worker. Corey started at the company the same year I did. He's not just good at his job. He's also incredibly good-looking. A real catch from day one. New colleagues, Sylvia and Angelica, both a couple of years my senior, clearly had their eyes on him. They often came over to Corey's desk offering to help with work or bringing him snacks, clearly trying to get his attention. One day, I found myself invited to a social gathering by Sylvia and Angelica. Of course, Corey was there too. There were two other male employees, but the eyes of these senior colleagues were fixed squarely on Corey. While I politely nodded along with the conversation, I quietly sipped my drink. To my surprise, Corey texted me later that night. Hey, Annie, we didn't get to talk much today. Want to go for a drive sometime? A people I was taken aback. I had always assumed he had no interest in me. I was a little puzzled by the sudden invitation, but I was delighted that a popular guy like him was showing interest in me. Soon, Corey and I began seeing each other occasionally and eventually started dating. Word got around the office and we became the hot topic. Sylvia and Angelica in particular must have been stunned which when they found out we were dating. Our interactions with them turned awkward, limited to polite greetings. Still, I was thrilled that Corey was my boyfriend. He treated me well and being with him was pure joy. Much as we continued to date, something started to nag at me. Whenever we were out, Corey seemed to attract attention from women. As we walked down the street, I noticed a pair of young women staring at three next to me. Wow, did you see that guy? He's so hot. I know, right? What a looker. If they were glancing back at us, I glanced at Corey, but it was hard to tell if he was hearing the same thing or not. He was completely expressionless. He was completely expressionless. Maybe for Corey, this kind of thing is just another day at the office. That, that could be why he doesn't even flinch when he hears voices like this. It's moments like these that make me fall for him all over again. But I couldn't just bask in the joy. It happened while we were sitting in the cafe. Sure enough, a group of women sitting at the next table were stealing glances at Corey. He's good looking, but isn't she just average? Yeah, what a waste. A hearing this, a shock ran through me, but I acted like I hadn't heard a thing. Corey, as usual, was indifferent and settled the bill. As hurt by those words, Yet a part of me thought, maybe they're right. I had always felt insecure, fearing that I might not be good enough for someone as handsome as Corey. Driven by my insecurity, I opened up to him about it. I do love you, Corey, but sometimes I worry you're quite the catch. And I worry you're quite the catch. And You don't have to worry, Annie. I love you just the way you are. Refer to those words brought tears to my eyes, and I decided to stop overthinking it. And so our relationship thrived and led us to marriage. Oh, at our wedding, Corey was quite the hit with the ladies. 
My aunt in her 50s ran up to me exclaiming, Annie, you scored a handsome hubby. Way to go, my old friends also came up to me whispering, You see, her husband is so handsome. We're jealous. But I had no more worries. Corey had chosen to marry me after all. I was so happy. Akin among the wedding guests were Sylvia and Angelica, my senior colleagues. Both congratulated us, smiling warmly, congrats, wishing you all the happiness. I hugged them both, saying thank you. Amst, my older sister and her family also attended. My sister is four years older than me and has a five-year-old daughter named Tiana. I'd asked Tiana to be our flower girl. I've always adored Tiana. So having her as part of the ceremony was a joy. Sometime after the wedding, my sister asked if we could babysit Tiana for a bit. Corey had the day off, so I happily agreed. When my sister came to pick her up, Tiana was fussing, saying she didn't is want to leave yet. My sister had to carry the crying Tiana away, thanking us before she left. Tiana wanted to stay longer. I said, Yeah, Corey agreed. Get away just the two of us, right? How about we take Tiana along next time? Wait, to the spa? Yeah, she was our flower girl, so it'd be a nice thank you. What do you think? Get away, just the two of us, right? How about we take Tiana along next time? Wait, to the spy? Yeah, she was our flower girl, so it'd be a nice thank you. What do you think? Hey, but uh, to the spa. Yeah, she was our flower girl, so it'd be a nice thank you. What do you think? Moom, if you really want to, sure. Really? Thank you, Corey. With that, we got the green light from my sister to take Tiana on an overnight spade trip. Or I drove. I was in the passenger seat, and Tiana sat in a child seat we borrowed from my sister. Tiana was all smiles, excited for the drive. We chatted and snacked as we made our way to the spa. After a while, Tiana started to talk. Much when I was in my mommy's tummy, I was usually sleeping, but sometimes I'd wake up and float around. Wow, Tiana, that's amazing. You remember so much. Yeah, and I could also hear mommy's voice. Really hearing this, even Corey, who was driving, couldn't hide his astonishment. Oh, can't believe this stuff actually happens. It's it's amazing, isn't it? Kids are something else. Soon after, Corey saw a convenience store on the side of the road. He parked the car and went inside to shop. Tiana and I decided to wait in the car. Eventually, Corey came back and we resumed our journey to the hot springs. As we were driving, Tiana suddenly said something surprising. Hey, big bro, how many times have you played princess in this car? Oh, what? I... Princess games. Yep, you've had a lot of princesses here, haven't you? Caught off guard by Tiana's abrupt comment, Corey was left wide-eyed and speechless. Confused, I turned around to question Tiana. Tiana, what do you mean by princesses? I mean, you've played princess a lot in this car, haven't you? Evil, I was as baffled as Corey was. Seeing our confusion, Tiana teased, I won't tell, it's my secret now because I found out on my own. Tiana wouldn't elaborate any further, giggling to herself and... Whispering, it's a secret. Suddenly, she grew tired and fell asleep. The atmosphere in the car turned strangely awkward. I was still puzzled by Tiana's earlier comment about Corey playing princess in the car. 
I thought to myself, maybe she saw a princess in the car. After a while, Corey and I started talking again. So what was Tiana talking about? This princess thing, I asked. Boy replied, no idea, man. Ixaben for Practories, I suggested. I know she likes princess characters and often plays pretend at home. Maybe she saw a princess in the car? Or he responded, I, who knows? I went on. You know, it seems like Tiana might have some sort of prenatal memories or maybe even special intuition. Come to think of it, she did mention she found out something on her own. Two hours later, we finally arrived at the hot springs. Tiana woke up as we arrived and went with us to our hotel room. All three of us entered the room, and Tiana happily gazed out the window. Court up to the room alone to take a bath. Tiana and I chatted in the room, feeling relaxed. After a while, I remembered what happened in the car and asked Tiana again. Hey Tiana, earlier in the car, you asked Cory, How many times have you played princess in this car? What was that about? Oak had a bean stort. Tiana responded, Nutsaha. I said, I have no idea what you were talking about, and it's been bothering me. Tiana then said, Well, then I'll show you. I found these in Big Bro's car. They were cute, so I thought I'd keep them a secret and take them all. And with that, Tiana opened her small bag and began to lay out various items on the table. I looked at the items Tiana had laid out on the table and was stunned. Hairpins, hair clips, earrings, necklaces, lipstick, mascara, and even a hotel-provided hairbrush. None of it was mine, but the... ...were clearly belongings of an adult woman. I asked Tiana, where exactly in the car did you find these? Well, they were under the seat near my feet. A lot of them, actually, Tiana replied. I then asked, wait, all of these were scattered around. Tiana responded, yes, it's like a princess playset. Right? Ryan has lots of these at home, too. Fix the people in your AC appearances and butter and store bado. Listen, can I hold on to these? I want to ask Corey something. Tiana then asked, what? No way, I found them. I replied, I'll buy you another adorable princess set, okay? Tiana agreed. Really? Okay, fine then. With that, I put everything Tiana laid out on the table into my bag. I had thought Tiana had some special perception, talking about prenatal memories and such, but it seems that wasn't the case. The items belonged to Corey's ex-girlfriend who must have left them in his car. However, my gut feeling wouldn't go away. Whose are these? Then Tiana and I went to take a hot spring bath. It was when we returned to the room. Corey was already there, fiddling with his mobile phone. And upon our entry, he hurriedly stuffed his phone into his pocket, Looking somewhat suspicious. Ah, uh, welcome back. Thanks. At the hot springs were uh, nice, right? Yeah, this place has amazing springs. Tiana got all warmed up too. Yes. After that, we enjoyed a luxurious dinner at the hotel. At night, Tiana, probably tired, fell asleep early. Corey was sprawled out playing with his phone. Hey, Corey. Ducks. Could you take a look at this? I placed all the items I had just received from Tiana on the table. Corey, rising from his seat to get a closer look, seemed to freeze, speechless. 
Looks like Tiana found all these things rolling around on the floor of the car. Ori, who had been slightly flushed from drinking, suddenly turned pale. She thought these were all princess playset stuff. Accessories, lipstick, mascara, brushes and all. He's said what this is about. So whose necklace is this? I held up the necklace for Cory to see. He didn't answer. Next, I took the lipstick and examined it closely. And it had the name Sylvia engraved on it. Sylvia? At this, Cory averted his eyes. Cory, this can't be Sylvia from work, can it? Bri remained uncomfortably silent. Why would Sylvia's lipstick be in your car? Did you give her a ride? He nodded in silence. Why? Are you seeing Sylvia? He nodded again. Are you kidding? Was this before or after our marriage? Bri answered in a somber tone. Both before and after? What? I was so shocked that my mouth stayed wide open after digging for the truth. Corey finally admitted to having an affair with Sylvia, but the surprises didn't stop there. I began to worry about... BK Angelica, who used to be close to Sylvia and also chased after Corey back in the day. Hey, you're not involved with Angelica too, right? Bree averted his eyes. You've got to be kidding me. Turns out Corey had been secretly seeing both Sylvia and Angelica while we were together. This continued even after we got married. Given that Corey, who works in sales, often worked late and wet in on weekends. And, and I started dating you, Sylvia began. Sending me tons of emails every day. She wanted to meet just uh, the two of us, so I'd meet her occasionally. Then An Angelica reached out, and I couldn't say no, and... Things just spiraled from there. I can't believe this. My once handsome, kind husband had been involved with three women at the same time. As I probed further, it turns out Corey had dated multiple women since high school. At one point during college, he was seeing up to five women at the same time. Ivor wanted to ask Corey about his past relationships in detail, as I thought nothing good would come of it. But to think he was this much of a womanizer... If you wanted to date multiple women, why the heck did you marry me? You could have stayed single and lived it up. I genuinely wanted to marry you, Annie, but I also needed different types of... ...relationships. Sylvia is like the dependable older sister, and Angelica is, well, harsh but physically my type. They, they're, they all serve different roles for me. It's been normal for me to rotate through multiple women. And, um... Except by now, I was beyond angry and just dumbfounded. My once dashing husband now just looked like a total sleaze. I had no idea there was something left in the car like that. I didn't know either if Tiana hadn't found it, I'd still be in the dark. Me neither. If Tiana hadn't found it, I'd still be in the dark. I'm really sorry. Remember how I used to say I felt insecure because you're so popular that I felt I wasn't good enough for you? Well, that's changed. No matter how handsome or popular you are, you're just a lowlife. Man! Corey looked down in defeat. If you want to sneak around, then go ahead and do it for the rest of your life. You'll find women who will flock to you just because you're good looking. But I'm done. I... This is to divorce. Corey's shoulders slumped. Corey's shoulders slumped. It was now late into the night, and Tiana was sound asleep. 
I was thankful to Tiana for finding all those lost items in the car. If not for this turn of events, I'd st be living in ignorance about the real Cory. What was supposed to be a happy hot spring trip had turned into the worst night of our lives. I was grateful to have caught onto Cory's infidelity sooner rather than later. Good morning, everyone. A quick announcement about some lost and found items. It turns out my husband's car was a treasure trove of lost items. Upon asking him, it seems they all belong to Sylvia and Candelica. I said this while placing the lost items from the car onto my desk. Both Sylvia and Angelica looked shocked, and the other employees started murmuring. Corey just stood there with a blink expression. This lipstick has Sylvia's name on it, doesn't it? As I held out the lipstick, Sylvia rushed over with a flustered look to claim it. I'm not sure about the rest, so could you two sort it out? Sylvia and Angelica started dividing up the various items I had placed on my desk. Both were visibly sweating and flushed. Sylvia, Angelica, thank you for entertaining my husband so thoroughly before and after our marriage. I understand he's been a frequent guest at your homes. Since I've found out that my husband has been seeing both of these ladies while married to me, I've decided to divorce him. Corey's face sank so low it almost disappeared. I'm stepping down as his wife so feel free to fight over him as you please that's all from me thanks for listening this concludes our morning meeting i sat down and the room buzzed with whispers cory sylvia and angelica stood silent and defeated soon after all three were called into a separate room by their bosses eventually that lead the trio couldn't no longer stay at the company and left, effectively getting fired. After the divorce, I returned to my parents' house and planned to commute from there for a while. I consulted a lawyer and sought compensation from Corey, Sylvia, and Angelica in the divorce trial. Later, I learned that Sylvia and Angelica were fully aware of each other's affairs with Corey and had been competing. Later, I learned that Sylvia and Angelica were fully aware of each other's affairs with Corey and had been competing by intentionally leaving their belongings in his car. Their little lost and found battle had been playing out without Corey and me ever knowing. Corey's departure from the company, none of them became a couple and they all dispersed. All three had a tough time finding new jobs, partly because they'd left the company in what was essentially a bearing. After the divorce, I returned to my parents' house and planned to commute from there for a while. I consulted a lawyer and sought compensation from Corey, Sylvia, and Angelica in the divorce trial. Later, I learned that Sylvia and Angelica were fully aware of each other's affairs with Corey and had been competing by intentionally leaving their belongings in his car. Their little lost and found battle had been playing out without Corey and me ever knowing. A departure from the company. None of them became a couple and they all dispersed. All three had a tough time finding new jobs, partly because they'd left the company in what was essentially a bearing. I hope to use this bitter experience for a better future hoping for a good relationship down the line. But their little lost and found battle had been playing out without Corey in me ever knowing.
was a departure from the company. None of them became a couple, and they all dispersed. All three had a tough time finding new jobs, partly because they'd left the company in what was essentially a bearing. Now, it seems they're all scraping by, dipping into their savings and taking part-time jobs to keep up with their alimony payments from their divorce cases. On top of that, it appears the rumor has spread and they've lost the relationships they had built up over the years. As for me, being back home meant I saw more of my sister and Tiana. Tiana still adored playing princess, happily prancing in front of the mirror in dresses and tiaras. You really are a cute princess. Yeah, I hope I will marry a handsome prince someday. Yes, but remember some princes might look good but are actually really bad. Make sure he's also a prince at heart before you marry him. Got it. I hope my niece Tiana continues to grow and truly finds happiness. As for me, who ended up divorced in my 20s, I hope to use this bitter experience for a better future, hoping for a good relationship down the line. <laughs>